It's been a bit since I've watched a movie with a story that twisted my head off with its intrigue and mystery. God's Crooked Lines is now on Netflix, and this Spanish mystery may just leave you scratching your head. When a charismatic private investigator is admitted to a psychiatric hospital, her presence sows dangerous seeds of doubt among the doctors on staff. So first off, this is a rather long movie at 2 hours and 35 minutes, and that almost put me off from even starting it. I am so glad, though, that I ended up watching. The story is very complex, with timelines that double back on themselves, which then compound the intrigue and obscure what's going on. Now, the premise of the film is that a woman named Alice arrives at a mental institution after a murder has taken place under the guise that she is ultra-paranoid. What most of the staff are told is that she is an incredible liar, but we're also told by Alice herself is that she is a private investigator sent to find out what really happened to the person who was killed. The way this plays out, there are some large similarities to Shutter Island, at least in the feel of the story. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that movie because I had figured it out very early on in it and then was grossly disappointed that I wasn't wrong. Now, in this, Alice is our narrator, and she is so wildly unreliable that it's almost impossible to know for certain what the truth is. And before the first hour was up, I had some very strong suspicions that I knew what the answers were, which then was also starting to bum me out because I didn't want to spend two and a half hours to find out that the mystery was so simple right from the start. Now, luckily, there are so many twists that we're shown and then told that I constantly doubted my suspicions. Alice is incredibly intelligent, so when she makes arguments and comes up with theories, it's very easy to believe her. But not all of the doctors believe her, especially based on what they're told about her lying. Now, the actors do a phenomenal job at keeping the truth obscured from us, so that even when it looks like they may be confirming a truth, we can't be certain. And the story keeps us on our toes by switching time frames consistently. We'll see parts of the events that led up to the murder, or maybe the investigation afterwards, but then we'll also see portions of Alice's life as she recounts elements from her past as part of her cover, or even how she became involved in the case. Now, the story is chock full of doubt, and because so many of the characters come across as a bit sketchy or cagey, they are also unreliable sources of the truth. So we get to sit and constantly guess at who in the moment is the most believable, the one who's locked in the institution or the one that's running it. Now, I do know that a lot of the back and forth can not only be confusing, but it can also get to be a bit tiresome. But it is really necessary in order to create all the convolutions that build out the mystery. As the story gets towards the end, though, the pieces do begin to fall more into place and we're shown what could be the full picture. But again, because we're still experiencing so much of this through Alice's eyes, there's always doubt associated with the narrative. Aside from the story, this is also an awesomely shot and produced movie. The time period is the late 70s. It's like either 78 or 79. And there are a ton of browns and earth tones that are incorporated into the costumes, as well as even the color tone of the movie. This helps to give it a slightly aged feeling, which is then complemented by the dress of the characters. Something that helps to make this a very engaging watch, in addition to the mystery, are the patients within the institution. There is a handful that we get to follow more than a cursory glance, and they actually have some great complexities to them that help to build out more of the intrigue. There is a pair of twins, and while they are both sympathetic characters, one in particular shines because of his actions. And there's also a dude named Ignacio, who has way more privileges than any of the other patients, and we get to learn a lot about him. He's charismatic and kind, but there are also some quirks to him that make him very endearing. And then there are also at least two doctors who are great to watch because of how much they care for the patients. They tend to be more compassionate, and they take the time to listen, rather than just dismiss everything that's told to them as utter craziness or delusion. And this also helps to then create doubt within the story, because if rational physicians are having certain thoughts, then it makes sense that we should be able to agree with them. Still never knowing, though, if it's the actual truth or not. So I think what will come down to whether or not you enjoy this story is if you're in the mood for an intricate and perplexing mystery told by an incredibly unreliable narrator that takes two and a half hours to get through. Now, for me, I was hooked, and because I wasn't ever sure I was landing on the right answer, the time flew by for me, and I enjoyed so much of it. Now, the back-and-forth storytelling can be a bit much, and some of it is repetitive, but that's also by design for the puzzle. And when this gets to the end, while there is a resolution and, I believe, some answers, it's not simple to understand, and I think there will be a few interpretations of what actually happened. Overall, God's Crooked Lines is a twisted story of doubt and intrigue, led by a dynamic and amiable protagonist. 
The story is a long one, and there are repetitive moments, but the narrative demands attention due to the complexities of a fairly straightforward story told by an extremely unreliable narrator. The characters are richly created, helping to weave a tale of misdirection and ambiguity, crescendoing into an enigmatic climax. There will most likely be several interpretations of what really occurred, but regardless of the answer, the journey is captivating. There's no sex, some nudity, a lot of profanity, and some brutal violence, including sexual assault. I give God's Crooked Lines four and a half out of five couches. So do you enjoy a good mystery? What's one that you're always recommending to somebody if they're looking for something to watch? Let me know what that is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.